Rapping is weird. Kind of weird that I'm actually here for rap styles before I lived and then passed out from Casimir's to crack out, feeling so rare. People playing with their fingers, texting their friends, sitting in chairs like, why is this guy over here? I'm hot, hey, whatever your mom say, from here to Bombay, other people be like, it's only 10 Zlati to buy a latte. I'll go in. Me versus you, we equal, like the score of Germany versus Poland. Go in, rhyme in the span, especially when we get in the north, south, beating our land, the finest man in the tan. Yeah, I get that man word up. Never had a rap that like, who is this guy on stage? I never heard it. Took a flight to D.C. D.C. got canceled to Frankfurt or Germany. Damn. Then I moved it to Amsterdam. I'm like, what you saw? I had to buy a new ticket to Warsaw. Call him up on the phone, busting my frame. People be like, I don't know what you saying, but it's okay because I ain't at the table. Ted X, I'm stuck on this plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to keep going, but I'll, I'll roll that applause. Um, so does anyone know what freestyle rap is? Okay. What is it? I don't know. Whatever. So for those who don't know, or for those who don't speak uh, English as good as I may or some of the other people here, freestyle is improvisation. It's off the top of your brain. It's coming up with something exactly on the spot. And what I'm going to leave, want to leave with you guys today is the theme of my chat here today is going to be how freestyle rap changed my life. And hopefully you guys can leave with a story or a couple stories at how maybe something in your life could be implemented into it from this talk that could change other people's lives as well. And even though you don't know exactly what I said, or maybe you probably never attended a rap show at a TEDx event in Poland before, <laughs> you will remember the way that I made you feel just now, and hopefully I could do a couple more asks for you if that's cool with you guys. So my name is Rami Matan Evanesh. I go by Kosha Dills. I'm a Virgo born on August 26th. My parents were all Israeli. They fought in every war of Israel. My whole family was murdered in the Holocaust. Um, I have three brothers. We're all independent and completely different. So I was not influenced by my brothers to do rap music. <laughs> um, I grew up doing sports, playing soccer, or as you guys call it, football. Um, I was the goalie because I wasn't good enough to be a midfielder or a, or a striker because we all want to be strikers. I grew up wrestling. If anyone liked wrestling, not the WWF wrestling, but collegiate wrestling, I went on to win a lot of tournaments. I went to NCAA Division I wrestling at Rutgers. And in between all that, I also got addicted to drugs, really ruined my life, committed crimes, almost tried to kill people, people tried to kill me, and then I ended up eventually here at TEDx Casimir's. <laughs> so... From what I always remember as a kid, I always wanted to fit in, and I never really felt in. You know, I never fit in in high school. I always was like the two-minute best friend of everybody, and, um, and I was good. I always took second and third place, and what I always remembered when I was younger is that I wanted to win, okay? So just remember that I always wanted to win, and when I was 17, I, I had a friend named Yak, and he was a amazing rapper at the time. He was really popular in New York City. He was an avenue East Third between Avenues B and C in New York City at this place called the New Yorican Poets Cafe. And there was an event called Bragging Rights, and it was a rap battle. And there were 32 people on stage, four in each round. And at that time, my rap name was just Kosher Dill. It wasn't even Kosher Dills yet. So for those who don't know what a Kosher Dill is, it's a very famous pickle in every American store and gas station across America. <laughs> and it's like a cheap thrill. It's really sour. You guys know what pickles are, right? Okay, just so. So people said, they said, hey, we have one extra spot. And I said, um, they said, kosher dill, come on down. And I was really excited. And I went down there, and everyone started laughing at me. They're like, kosher dill, ha, 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 like kosher dill pickle. And I went on stage, and I forgot everything I wrote down. <laughs> kind of like today. <laughs> And I just started rapping and rapping and rapping and rapping and rapping. And I was doing this. And he's like right here. If you guys seen 8 Mountain, I'm like da 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 da. And this guy was huge. And I was really small. And I smoked a lot of weed at the time. So I was really out of my mind. And everyone started going crazy. They were like, ah, ah, I think. Right, from what I remember. 
But I remember the way it made me feel. So I didn't, be, I didn't win the round, but I beat like two people, you know. I was like second place out of the four. So I didn't go ahead. But I felt really good about myself. And then I came back two months later, and then I won a round. And I was kind of chasing that personal high the way I felt the whole time. Now, we're going to fast forward throughout college. 18, 19, I started getting heavily involved in drugs. I dropped off the wrestling team. Um, I got arrested for the first time. Um, I was charged with the multiple amounts of felonies. I was selling ecstasy at the time, cocaine, marijuana, everything. And the only reason why I say it like so broadly termed is because people are watching from all over the world. And they're like, what's ecstasy? Molly, you know, it gets like a d different name every week. And to this day, I, I, just so you guys know, I haven't drank or did a drug in like over 11 years, up till today. I'm not sure about tomorrow, but anyway, just so you know that, <laughs> that I'm not like high right now. I didn't want them to think. <laughs> they're like, what kind of people are they inviting here? <laughs> You know, makes for a good story at least, right? So go on in, and then I go, I go to jail, and I always wanted to fit in, right? So I, even when I went to jail, and I was, like, sentenced to nine months, I wanted to be sentenced to more so I could, like, gone to prison. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be on, like, I really, like, always wanted to fit in, like, even on that level. I wanted to go to prison. I wanted to be, like, more of a rapper. I wanted to put out. And, and one thing that was credible is I put a vinyl out. So in 2005, I got my first show, and it was sort of similar to a room like this. It was opening up for the group 112. And there was about 500 people there. They paid me $500. It was my first paid rap show of all time. This was 11 years ago. And everyone was like, boo. And I would start rapping and rapping and rapping. Boo. And they booed me off the stage. Everyone booed. And I got so angry. But the only time that I got any cheer was when I freestyled. Because <laughs> they didn't like my songs. Um, so when we fast forward again, so that was... Basically, another example of like feeling, I was always rejected, you know, I was always rejected. And that's why freestyle became so important to me because once I started rejecting my songs, all I could do was like, why are you staring at me right here? Yes, yes, y'all, you don't think I impress you chilling with your legs crossed, fresh off, right when I step off, sick in this classic. I used to also have glasses. I ain't really famous. I used to have braces, but now I don't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it just rapping like that. And, you, you know, and, and, and for one moment, they weren't booing me, you know, and that's what made me feel better. So then we go forward into 2009. Has anyone ever heard of the Wu-Tang Clan? Yeah. Okay, thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> I'm like, do you have a Wu-Tang Clan? <laughs> I'm saying, okay. um, so it was in Portland, Oregon. Has anyone ever heard of Portland, Oregon? It's really far away. They have some good TV shows. And it was the end of a tour. And there was Rizzo's doing a show, and I convinced my friends to get on stage and spit one freestyle, and then I snuck backstage to meet the Rizza, and what did I do for him? I freestyled. And you know what he said? Get the hell, no. <laughs> he said, you know, go on stage. And then I freestyled in front of him and got the crowd live, and got the crowd live again, and next thing you know, I was working with the Rizza from Wu-Tang Clan, just like that, from freestyling. Freestyle rap changed my life. 2000. 12, <laughs> we're jumping forward here. I fly out, whew, sort of like yesterday, but the plane actually flew. For those that don't know, I've been, I was at the airport for 50 hours, for those just watching, 50 hours total. And I ended up in the UK, and I didn't get one of those passes. They were like refunding me when I got there. And it was my birthday. I was so excited. I'm like, I'm going to the United Kingdom from rap music. My life has changed. I'm not on drugs. I'm in Heathrow Airport spending pounds. For everything is really expensive. And I was really tired coming from Germany. And they said, they stopped me. And they said I couldn't go in the country. So they put me in holding. It was like international jail. And I was, and they had all of a sudden, I was like, God, not, not again on my birthday. My mom was so, she was so disappointed. I was like, you're in jail again. Because <laughs> I had gone to jail multiple times. Um, and uh, so I got deported back to America. So then I went to America and I had about five days to this famous festival called Rock the Bells. And see, freestyle is a way of life. You just think, and you have to make the best of situations at any moment. It's sort of like, it has, is anyone in sales here? Is anyone in sales? Okay. One, has anyone ever sold anything? Let's start there. You know, has anyone ever bought anything? <laughs> you know the guys that's trying to sell you and sell you and sell you? And, and that's sort of like in hip-hop, well, we were just like backstage, and I showed up. I drove to Maryland from New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. Drove down. There's this famous festival called Rock the Bells, and I somehow schmoozed my way here, schmoozed my way there. Next thing you know, I'm on stage in front of a couple thousand people. Everyone's waving their hand in the air. I knew some people. They're rapping, rapping, rapping. I sneak backstage again, and who is it? 
It's to RZA. He's there. So I hang out with him, and next thing you know, I'm at the Wu-Tang Studios in New Jersey, and I'm recording a song with the RZA after I got deported from the United Kingdom. No offense to the United Kingdom. Love you guys. <laughs> Seriously. Um, and then life just kept turning, turning up for the better. I kept showing up and showing up, and RZA invites me to the BET Awards. Anyone know the BET Awards? This Black Entertainment Television. Sort of like T-E-D, but B-E-T. <laughs> okay, so I end up in this thing. It's called a cypher, and I freestyle. And I freestyle, not in English, because I'm not really the best rapper, I'll be honest with you. You thought I'm better. I appreciate that. But, I mean, in general, I'm not really. There's a lot of rappers that are better than me. Eminem, well, he's, he's better than me. We'll just leave him with him, okay? And I rapped. I, I called them my buddy C. Ray's Walls. And C. Ray's Walls is actually the first person to introduce me to Krakow. And he came here for the Jewish, the Jewish festival, which is at the end of this month, which is really awesome. And um, he said, you should rap in Hebrew and Spanish on, on BET, because you'll be the first person to ever do it. So I did it like this. I said, Shalom Mani Ram, Rami Hamatan, Rami Hamatan, Kolos Man, Yoshi Balagana, Shevani Gangan, Lopo Velo Kankan, Inta Lomo Tiro Tiatam, Metum Tam Tam, Inta Loma Kiro Tiatam, Metum Tam Tam, which basically means, hi, my name is Rami, Rami the Gift. Rami, if you don't know who I am, you're an idiot. And that's basically what I said, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was cool, and I was in that, and then I got invited, and, and years ago, I, when I first got clean, I met a guy from BET, and he says, you should try out for this thing called Freestyle Friday, and then when I went to the award show, eight years later with the Risen, I'm sitting in the front row of the award show, and to the left of me is Rick Ross, and here's Fat Joe, when he was still fat, and, <laughs> and there's all these other rappers that looked like rappers, and I was walking down the red carpet, sort of like this red carpet. I'm walking down, like, you know, stunting like this. And they're like, oh, he, you, know, he's, you know, he's a lawyer or something, or he's Jewish, you know. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm a rapper, I swear to God. <laughs> like, listen, and, I, you know, I showed up, they didn't even, didn't even try to let me in. And I was sitting in the front row, and I turned to the back, and who is it, the same guy who walked in my gym and said, you should try out for that amateur contest eight years later? And I said, isn't it funny how the world works? How freestyling has literally brought me from working at a gym, meeting the guy who says you should try out for this amateur contest, and eight years later, I'm in his award show. In 2012, more freestyling helps my life. And at this point, I'm still broke. If you guys are wondering if I've made any money, I'd have no money whatsoever. Just like some of us here. <laughs> and so my friend Jesse Shacken, right? My friend Jesse Shacken, I made, a, I made an album called Beverly Dills. I like shouting out my own stuff because people are going to be like, i got to look this guy up. Pickles, rapping. They're going to look it up on the internet. And um, I made a song called Cellular Phone. And I was always freestyling in a studio too because they said freestyle, you do freestyling better than writing. Which is really sort of offensive, right? Because as an artist, you want to write. Imagine a painter saying like, just throw the paint on the wall, but don't take your time doing anything because anything you put effort into is no good. <laughs> That's what they basically said to me. So I went into the studio and went, bow, wow, wow. Nick, Nat, Patty, Wacka, Kosher, Dills, a bone. Tell your girl to go pay the bill of my cellular phone. I don't need no talk, no politics. I leave the stuff alone. When well, I'm in the zone, um, yeah, I'm in the zone. I know you guys aren't impressed, right? It's like, it's like what is he rapping about? He does, there's nothing serious about it. So, okay, so I'm driving. It's 2012. This is after the BET Awards, after my big hurrah with the RZA. And I graduate to my first tour bus. So I go into this tour bus, but it's not really a tour bus. I was told it was a tour bus. It was a Winnebago. Um, so I was in this Winnebago, and they said they'd feed you, and they would give me, they gave me pop tarts. And I was on this tour, and it was like the X Games. You know, anyone know the X Games? It's this big snowboarding competition, and we were going to be the artists, but it was more like the amateur contest, and it was like at these little little slopes and everything. And I was rapping in the freezing cold, traveling here and there, and I did this show in Kansas, in Lawrence, Kansas, for $150. 2012, this was just a couple years ago, $150 in Lawrence, Kansas, in the middle of nowhere. And I got the 150 bucks, and at the end of the night, I got the $150, uh, what is it, the, you know, the USB or the... the, the memory cartridge stolen. So at the end of the $150, how much did I make? Zero. 150 minus 100. You guys got that? Okay. <laughs> so I made zero dollars. I'm like sad. I'm like, how sad is it? You know, I've done all this successful stuff. I've been rapping with the Riz. I've been touring with Modest Yahoo all around in the midst of that as well, who I was just with here in, uh, in Poland. And um, I was like down in the dumps, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of like, why am I doing this? So I, I go to the, we're in, we're in Loveland, Colorado. 
very famous for its gas station. So I went to this gas station in Colorado, Rocky Mountains. And I get a call from Jesse, and he goes, where are you? I said, I'm in Loveland, Colorado at this rest stop. And he goes, I need you to record something. You know that song where you were like, bow, wow, wow, yippee, you know, that one that I just said to you guys? He goes, I need you to record it because we need it for a commercial. I said, what is it? Come on, tell me. And he goes, I can't tell you. It's big. It's big. I said, how big? He says, real big. I said, how big? He says, really big. I can't tell you. I said, come on. And he refused to tell me. So I go in. And it's the first time I ever record anything, and I record. It's just like I freestyle the moment. I'm like, what do I do? I pay $12 to the person at the attendant to buy one of those $12 showers. In America, you could buy showers for like $10 at gas stations. And um, I go in, there's no music, and I re-record it, and I rig it up, and I put my, my thing here and a microphone there, and I go, Nick, Nat, Patty, Wagga, Coach, Dills, a Bone, tell you good. And I do the thing over again, and I had to change some of the words. And then 10 days later, it was in a Bud Light commercial for the Super Bowl, the number one rated commercial on USA Today. It was seen over 100 million times in the fourth quarter, one of the highest rated Super Bowls of all time. And I made tons of money! Yeah! Yes! Wow, wow, wow. And now I have no more money left still. <laughs> I guess, but it was a good story, right? It was a good story. It was a good story. So you're freestyling this life of mine, you know? And in 2015, just, you know, it's still, like, still not catching a break, but the Super Bowl, I mean, it was great, you know? And then I got on a Warp Tour, Vans Warp Tour, and I did that all summer. And then Jesse goes on to hit a really big. Jesse goes on to get nominated for three Grammys after the cellular phone song, and he does it for Sia, for Sia Chandelier. Has anyone heard of the song Chandelier? With a little girl dancing, she's like, wah, wah. You guys, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> goes on, and I'm rapping outside, right? I, I, but before I'm rapping, I said, I said, I gotta go buy a ticket to the Grammys because Jesse's at the Grammys, and then everyone at the Grammys is gonna know that I'm the best because I have music with Jesse, I have all my music with this guy. So I hit up my buddy Mega Ran, and I'm like, yo, man, we need to get tickets. I hit up Jesse. He's like, we can't get any tickets. I hit up Mega Ran. I sent him the $300. Send me the ticket. Send me the ticket. We're going to the Grammys, everybody. It's going to be a big year. We're going to the Grammys. I get all my outfit. Bad news. We don't have, we can't get Grammy tickets. They're all out. So they're all out. So what do I do? So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to street perform. And street performing, freestyling, saved my life. And I'm going to tell you how it did. I missed all the drugs, missed all the bad things, rapping on the street, being humble saved my life. And I made people feel a specific way this night. So I go and I start rapping outside the Grammys. I'm rapping on the street, freestyling about everyone walk by. I meet Kanye West, just kidding. I meet Weird Al Yankovic, who walks by. I take a picture with him. I'm like, this is amazing. I end up at parties with all these famous people that I shouldn't even say here at TED. They're doing all kinds of unfamous things. And I'm like, oh my God, and I sign this little sheet when I'm rapping and I make like $40 and something happens and I get an email and then here's this number again. And it's for $150 to do a car commercial, but it's not a commercial, it's like one of the surveys, right? So I fill out the survey, I get an email later that my likeness is being used in a commercial and then I make thousands and thousands and 50,000s of dollars from rapping outside the Grammys when I wanted to be inside the Grammys. So what's the moral of the story? Freestyle rap. <laughs> Saved my life. Educated, memorized, and telling you fly while you're sitting here looking at me in awe. I might have talked too much, but at least I flew 6,000 miles, something you never saw before. Representing no gimmicks if I live it when I'm hacking down. Only got 25 seconds in this last minute. I'm going to be gifted when I feel it so well. I'll go in. Representing with my people out here in Poland. The bomb say, jen dobre, jen kuya, and hot hey. When I be in Poland, you know what we say. Kohamche. <laughs> I love you guys. My name is Coach Shadils. I hope you felt what I felt. Peace, yo.